What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in this tutorial I'm going to be sharing with you these five amazing secrets for floors in Revit. Now everybody knows how to do floors in Revit. As soon as you master these sketching tools, which are not that difficult to master, well you can then do all kinds of floors that you want and it's, it's quite simple. But in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you these five secrets or these five tips and tricks to take your floor game to another level. Uh, and now in this video uh, I'm going to be covering first uh, kind of for a little bit for sidewalks first how to create a ramp on a sidewalk so a handicapped ramp or something like that that allows you to go up a sidewalk uh, in an incline so that's the first thing the second thing uh, or the second tip or secret will going to be how to do a curb uh, in Revit and that's uh, that's uh, quite cool to create again for a sidewalk a sidewalk curb that's the second thing uh, the third tip that I'm going to be sharing with you is different floor finishes so for your floor you want to have a single uh, basically a single concrete slab for the whole floor but then you want to have different floor finishes in different rooms maybe for the living room you want some wood flooring then for maybe for the uh, bedroom you want some carpet and for the kitchen you want some uh, some tiles and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to divide up just the top layer of your floor which is quite cool then I'm going to be showing you as well how to uh, how to basically manipulate your uh, your floor to get some w weird shapes. So you can basically create a a floor uh, in pretty much any shape in it within Revit. And also I'm going to be showing you how to create a metal deck floor. So that's a floor that's uh, basically constructed using a metal deck and then concrete is poured into it. Uh, it's a quite common construction these days. It's very efficient and that metal deck uh, uh, basically adds a little bit of strength and uh, or uh, I guess flexibility to that whole floor and I'm going to be showing you all of the tools and features that Revit has on offer for creating that specific type of a floor and how to load in different uh, different metal decks into Revit and load them into your floor. So that's what this tutorial is going to be all about. Now before we get into that just quickly I would just like to ask you to like this video it helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm and if you haven't subscribed already I suggest you do. I make useful Revit tutorials each week. I make multiple tutorials plus I do one advanced Balkan architect course uh, these courses are all over one hour long one comes out each week and first link in the description takes you to my patreon there you can find all of these courses as well as all of my Revit project files so I've got like almost 40 hours of content over there uh, as far as courses and then I've got over 300 uh, Revit project files so if that's something you're interested in first link in the description okay without any further ado let's get into the tutorial. I'm going to start this project from scratch just so anyone can follow along. So I'm going to go here to models and then let's start a new model and let's go with an architectural template for this demonstration. I'm just going to click OK and there we go. Uh, now the first step is going to be regarding to creating sidewalks in Revit. Now creating a sidewalk is pretty simple. You just go here to floor and then you just do a simple rectangle, you hit finish, and there you go, you have your sidewalk. Now, sidewalks usually contain those little ramps. Now, these ramps are either for disabled people, for uh, people using bicycles, for uh, those uh, children carriages, things like that. So you should have a little ramp that allows you to get on this sidewalk. And this is actually pretty tall. This is a 400 millimeter floor and it would be quite difficult to get up this in uh, for a disabled people or, uh, or something like that. So you really do have to have a ramp. Now these ramps are usually built into your uh, into concrete and let me show you how that is built within Revit. Uh, so to, to do something uh, like that I'm going to be using uh, these shape editing tools that are over here. So when you select your floor here on the modify tab you get these shape editing tools. So first let's go here into level 1 and then I'm going to go with the split align option and now we need to sketch that ramp out. So I'm going to go like this, maybe 1.2 meters, and let's do the angle of 60 uh, degrees. Uh, then for the second line, let's go uh, from here. You can check on chain, it's going to make it a bit easier. So let's go maybe 1.4 meters, 
and then or uh, 1400 millimeters and then let's go back at the same angle of 60 degrees just go back to this line and then click now let's hit escape uh, now let's go back and add a couple of more split lines so I'm going to go from this point down uh, to this then go back to split line and from this point down to this line then go to modify and let's uh, go into 3d and see what we have created so we have basically sketched out the way this would look in the floor plan but now we have to just adjust the heights so we get that uh, so we get that ramp so just select your floor again uh, go into modify sub elements and now as you can see all of these are sub elements and when you select them you can modify their height now I want to select this line over here the middle line so don't select the other ones select the middle one and then you just use these dra uh, drag grips to move it all the way to the bottom so it creates a ramp from the bottom now the whole thing is going to highlight in orange just because it's recognizing an error so just go back here to the modify tool and as you can see, it looks a bit weird just because the whole floor moved down. Uh, now you can fix that. You can uh, make sure that it just goes down to a single point or a line by going and selecting the floor, go into edit type. And here under structure, we can edit the material to have a variable thickness. So once you check this and click OK and apply, now this allows to the, uh, the material to have a variable thickness so it doesn't go down over here and it basically go the thickness goes to zero at this point and there we go we have that uh, little ramp for disabled people or for uh, people with children or something like that and uh, if I go maybe into level one we can create a section that goes through this and then if you open up the section there you go you have that ramp now of course you can modify it if necessary maybe the slope is too high so you can go uh, go ahead and here uh, going to modify sub elements and then or maybe add split lines can we select this split line yeah I think we can move it yeah there we go so you can move it to make the angle a bit larger or or smaller or something like that but there you go, that's how you create these ramps uh, in Revit, the, uh, these ramps on sidewalks. Okay, moving on, now let's talk about, uh, uh, while well, talking about sidewalks, let's add the curb. So I'm going to perhaps select this, go into edit type, and then uh, perhaps let's do a little fillet edge over here. And let's say we want to add a curb uh, to this your sidewalk. Uh, now to add a uh, to add a curb, uh, you can go and use some sort of a, a sweep. So go model in place and then do some sort of a sweep, but that's quite inefficient. For curbs, what they like to use is uh, by going here into floor, we have the option for a slab edge. Now, if we open up that up, we have some default slab edges, and if you go ahead here and place one of these. It looks like this. So it's a regular slab edge, usually for structural purposes, and that's not what we want to have. We want something that resembles a curb. So to model something like that, what you need to do is you need to create a new curb profile. So go here to File, uh, go to New, and let's create a new curb profile family. So you go into Family, you scroll down, and you try to find some uh, profiles. There we go, Metric Profile, and yeah, uh, open that up. This is what that looks like. Now, as you remember, the height of that uh, of that concrete slab or our sidewalk is 400 millimeters. So just keep that in mind. Go 400 millimeters down, and then let's do a curve that looks I don't know something like this. Maybe it can be a bit smaller, more narrow something like that there we go so we have a perfectly decent curb now you just go ahead and save this I'm going to save it on my desktop let's call it a uh, curb it's save there we go and let's load it into the project and close it off so once it's loaded into the project what you need to do is uh, you need to change that uh, you need to change that slab edge uh, profile so if I go here uh, into slab edge go into edit type here we have the profile option and now we can search for that curb profile hit apply okay and then also for the material we can change that and I'm going to go with some uh, white uh, material maybe gypsum wallboard or something like that just so so we can have a different color here for the curb then let's go into 3d uh, go into our floor slab edge and now uh, the trick is to select the top edge and you click 
and there we go so you add your curb pretty much everywhere where you need it and when we go into realistic it's going to have that other color and it's going to look really nice and as you can see it goes around curved surfaces or curved edges which is really good Another thing that's really cool uh, as far as Revit floors are concerned that not many people know about and that's uh, metal decking. So uh, for floor construction sometimes you use metal decks and then uh, over those metal decks you pour concrete and for that we actually have a Revit floor and it's uh, kind of a system family when you go here to floors here we have the uh, 16, uh, 160 millimeter concrete with 50 millimeter metal deck now if I open that family up and let's uh, just model a piece of floor here hit finish and then uh, let's go into level 1 and let's perhaps move this section to go through that let's open that section up and as you can see uh, here, if I go here to find level of detail, here we have a metal deck on the bottom. Uh, now, of course, this can be changed. So if I select this uh, floor and go here into edit type, and then you have to go into structure. And then here we have the uh, metal deck. And currently it's uh, uh, just here you can set the material. But for the profile, you need to go down to the structural deck uh, properties, which is only uh, inside of this family. And then here you can you can basically edit uh, either the usage so it can be either a standalone deck or uh, bound a layer above so that basically means are you pouring concrete inside of this metal deck or are you just placing a uh, some sort of a concrete slab over it so if you go uh, to uh, bound layer above that means that concrete is pouring into it and then if you go into standard standalone deck and hit ok apply Okay, as you can see now we have here first the concrete uh, and then underneath we have the, the deck. If I go into realistic you can see that even better. And uh, let's, let's select that thing again, go back into edit type, into edit structure, uh, select the material or the layer and then we can go back to bound to layer above, hit OK, apply and now we're back to what we had. Now of course you can change this uh, deck so just again select the layer you can change this profile currently there is only one loaded in but if we cancel out of this uh, menu what you can do is you can always go here to the insert tab go into load family and then here in the US metric uh, library or US Imperial depends on what you're using you can find some uh, you can go and find some profiles so let's go to profiles uh, here we go and here we have metal decks and there we go so we have a couple of these so you have this one this one this one and this one let's go with maybe the composite one uh, open that up you select your uh, floor you go into edit type go into edit structure select the uh, layer that's called structural deck and then here you can uh, change from one of these so maybe let's go with this one hit ok apply and as you can see now we have a different type of a metal deck it has these little kind of uh, knots into it things like that so you can play around with this and you can find the metal deck that you're looking for now talking about the structure of floors let me go back into 3d and let's do another floor so let's go into architecture the floor and then uh, let's do another floor over here and for this floor I want it to be perhaps yeah, let's go with the generic 400 millimeters but let's go here into edit type let's duplicate this one and let's go uh, layered floor I'm just going to call it layered floor and here I'm going to change the base structure layer to 200 millimeters and then here I'm going to insert maybe a couple of more layers so maybe here we have some other some insulation maybe some rigid insulation and let's do that at I don't know like 30 millimeters and then here let's do some wood finish and let's go with oak flooring and uh, that can be 20 millimeters now here make sure to change the function one uh, well when you're doing this so go here into structure and or in the function and change it to uh, we can go maybe with substrate and for this one the final one that will be finish one okay so with the uh, functions changed maybe we can check off variable for this uh, this thickness just because it's not necessary for this particular wall click OK OK again and there we go so as you can see here we have a wooden finish uh, now let's say this is a part of your floor 
and then on your floor plan maybe in some parts you have your bathroom and bathrooms should have a different floor finish you can't have a wood in the bathroom you should have some sort of a tile uh, now to change that what you would have to do uh, usually what I see people doing is going to edit boundary and then they kind of cut out a small portion and then they do a uh, oops let's continue and they trim and extend and then they do a different type of a floor in this area so they go again to floor and then they do a different floor here and then they change the layers for that floor and that's how they get different finished material now this is a very inefficient approach and what I like to do is I like to have one single piece of floor with different finishes well how do we edit that let me just go back a couple of times uh, there we go one more there we go so how can we edit just the finished material well we can do that by going here on the modify uh, tab once this floor is selected go into create and here we have the option to create parts now this basically allows you to separate your floor into your layers uh, now once it's separated as you can see you can select individual layers so we can just select the finish layer and then go here into divide parts and once you're here you can go here into edit sketch and then you can sketch out the division of these parts so you can go just like this hit finish and then hit finish again and there you go now we have a separated layer here and we can select this uh, we can select this part basically and then we can play around with it uh, we can uncheck this uh, option where we have uh, material uh, by original uncheck that and then we can have a separate material perhaps tile let's see do we have some tile or maybe carpet yeah let's try out carpet and there we go so we have a different finished material here and you can do this infinitely you can select this again go into divide parts and then sketch something out maybe an arc hit finish and then you can select this again uncheck uh, material by original and then you can change this to some sort of a well let's do tile here a ceramic tile yeah, that works and there we go so here we have okay this doesn't look like ceramic tile let's try something a bit better I don't like this look either let's see tile porcelain uh, this might look a bit better there we go this looks a lot better so there you go that's how you can change the finished materials without having to change uh, the whole structure of your uh, of your floor and finally just for fun let me show you how you can you create some wacky floor shapes so let's go here into floor and I'm going to do a rectangular floor maybe the, this type and let's do a rectangle here hit finish and I'm going to do one more so let's go to floor again and then for this one I'm going to do uh, an arc kind of like that and then I'm going to offset that by 1200 millimeters just like that and then let's just close it off to the sides with no offset of course there we go hit finish there we go okay so here we have this this floor uh, and uh, let's see how can we play around and get some wacky shapes so when you select the floor here we have the modify sub elements that what that's what we used here for this uh, sidewalk ramp but also you can play around and go to modify side uh, modify sub elements and then you can select this uh, dot for example this point here let me try a bit better there we go and then you can maybe extend this upward uh, yeah okay now unfortunately this is that a variable floor so it's going like this all the way to the ground but if you don't want that let's switch it to the layered floor and you get something that looks like this it looks really cool uh, let's do the same thing here with this ramp let's switch to our layered floor 
So this is how you can create this hyperbolic paraboloid uh, 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 shaped roof or something like that. And then here, for example, this, I can turn it into a spiral ramp just by going here into modify sub elements and then just by switching this up. And there you go. So we have a spiral ramp in Revit just by using the floor tool with the uh, modify sub elements. Now, feel free to play around with these and uh, come up with some cool, wacky shapes. Okay, so that's uh, pretty much covers uh, this uh, little tutorial that uh, uncovers some of the secret uh, tools and tips and tricks on how can you uh, use uh, floors uh, in Revit in different ways to achieve different results. Okay, so uh, if this was interesting, uh, please subscribe, like, and share this video. And also, if you want some of my advanced Balkan Architect courses, check out my Patreon, first link in the description. There you can get access to all of my courses over 38 hours of content so far. Also, if you're uh, interested in these project files, all of my project files can be found there as well. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.